Hi, everybody. I'm Len Wells. It's time now for the news from the Steve Thompson Country Financial News Desk. Steve Thompson, your country financial representative. Lane County Sheriff's Police, along with Washington County authorities, have identified a suspect in connection with the theft of a John Deere tractor stolen from a dealership in Centralia. The suspect has been identified in police reports as Michael Todd Nosick, age 50, of Reinhardt. Following an investigation, which included statements that Nosick had made to police, he is accused of stealing a John Deere 3046R tractor from the Reichman Brothers dealership in Centralia and then selling it through the Mount Airy Ruritan Club's annual farm machinery auction. Now, the individual who bought the tractor was from West Salem. Well, that individual smelled a rat when he noticed the serial numbers and a number of identification decals had been removed from the tractor. Police were alerted by the buyer and uh, discovered a serial number that had not been ground off and discovered it had been stolen out of Centralia. Records show the tractor had a value of some $30,000 and was sold at auction for $14,000. The tractor has been returned to the dealership and information about Nosick's alleged involvement in the theft has been turned over to the Wayne County State's attorney, Kevin Kakak, for possible filing of charges. Yeah, that's right. We bought a stolen tractor. The news report said a West Salem man, well, I guess I grew up near West Salem, so maybe once from West Salem, always from West Salem? Anyway, these first few pictures are from the auction day. I wasn't actually at the auction. This was my brother Tom and my nephew Randall. They were taking pictures of this tractor. You can see there it had 52.7 hours on it. It's got the air ride seat, the mid PTO, and the third SCV. The weather was really nasty that day. It was cold and snowy. Perfect day to buy something at an auction. We could see that the tractor wasn't in perfect condition. We noticed that the top link had been replaced and the bucket had been bent a little there on the top, you can see. Overall, a pretty hard life for 53 hours. But we didn't see anything major wrong with it, so as you can see, here's Randall and Tom taking it off the trailer and parking it inside. They even got to move a little snow with it that first evening. The wheels on this left side were faded, so we could tell that it had been left outside for a large part of its life. Here it is beside Dad's 3320. It actually looks a little shorter, but maybe that's just the angle. So the auction was on January 15th, but Christy and I didn't get to see the tractor until February the 3rd. While we were looking it over, we decided to double check the model year. This information is in the serial number. There's supposed to be a serial number plate on the right side of the front axle. In this situation, you can see it's gone. However, you can see that Deer has stamped the actual serial number into the frame. As an aside, you would think if the crook was going to take off the serial number plate, he would at least take a second glance and make sure that it wasn't in the frame right there behind it. As Lynn Wells, the newsman, said so professionally, at this point, I was beginning to smell a rat. Even more so, once I saw the diesel particulate filter here, it had a bunch of grind marks on it as well. I couldn't really understand why anyone would grind off numbers or whatever from the diesel particulate filter, so that was just strange to me. Then later that evening, the light hit the loader sidearm just right, and I was able to see that there had been some grinding take place on that sidearm. At this point, the rat smell was becoming quite strong. We saw no evidence of any mechanical need for grinding there, so we just assumed that there had been a serial number plate ground off. I verified this the next day on a Sunday by stopping by a John Deere dealership and just looking at one on the lot. Sure enough, there was a serial number plate there. I made one phone call to a John Deere dealer, and they told me that the tractor had never been sold, that it was sitting on the lot at Reekman's in Centralia. So my next call was to Reekman's, and I asked him if they were missing a tractor. Sure enough, they were. So my worst fears were confirmed. At first, the local Ruotan Club was very supportive. They obviously felt some degree of responsibility and uh, really wanted to try to work to get my money back. However, once their lawyer and insurance company got involved, they began to change their tune, saying things like, Well, I hope it works out for you, Tim. And relaying quotes from their lawyer like, is this guy really going to spend $20,000 in legal fees to collect $14,000 from us? I was actually quite surprised by these type of responses, as I had always assumed that 
it was the auction house's responsibility to provide clear title on anything they're selling. So I began to search for auction law on the subject of title. I quickly came up with an expert here, Mike Branley. If you'll read that, it says, Simply put, auctioneers need to be concerned with title, ownership of that they are selling at auction. The burden of title falls on the auctioneer to reasonably ensure that he has the authority to sell the subject property, and the subject property is free of liens and encumbrances, not otherwise disclosed to buyers. There is substantial case law all across the United States which suggests, as an agent for the seller, the auctioneer is bound to verify title of goods being sold, most notably as a case we discuss in our auction verdicts class involving Deere & Company decided June 1, 2001. At this point, it's pretty clear to me that the Ruotan Club knows they are responsible and liable for this situation, but they're going to force me to fight it. I spoke to another well-known auctioneer in the area, and by the way, an auctioneer that I would be using at this point if I need to sell anything, and he said, quote, if it were me, I would just write you a check. And that's what I expect. This is a huge auction each year. And I don't think it's in the Ruotan's best interest to have buyers always worried about whether something is stolen or whether it has clear title or whether it has a lien or any other type of issue. They just need to stand up and take responsibility. Now back to the crook for a moment. As soon as he got his check, he made it out to his girlfriend, and the money is gone. So really uh, collecting from the crook is not likely for anyone. Even then, it's not clear that I'm first in line to collect. Reekman Brothers lost a good bit on this as well. The tractor that they got returned to them was not nearly in the condition it was when it was sitting on their lot originally. Let's hear some more from Lynn Wells about the status of this guy. Wayne County Sheriff's Police report the arrest Wednesday of 50-year-old Michael Todd Nozick of Reinert on a Wayne County warrant, charging him with aggravated unlawful possession of a stolen farm tractor. Nosick is accused of stealing a John Deere farm tractor from a dealership in Centralia, then turning around and selling it in the Mount Erie Ruritan Club annual farm machinery auction. The buyer, a man from Edwards County, noticed some serial numbers had been removed from the tractor and alerted police. Nosick is being held in the Wayne County Jail pending the posting of $2,500 cash bond. The tractor has since been returned to the dealership. We, quote, smelled a rat on Saturday, confirmed that the tractor was stolen on Monday, notified the authorities, and Reekmans came and picked it up, I believe either Wednesday or Thursday. Some might ask, why did you say anything, Tim? I'm certain I could have kept this tractor for years as long as I didn't take it to a deer dealer. And the answer is actually pretty simple. I'm just not that kind of person. Well, I hope you found this story interesting. It's been interesting to us so far. We'll try to keep you updated as we find out new information and let you know what happens. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.